and welcome to today's book club, a podcast where we read about some Dungeons and Dragons and discuss how we might include it in our role playing campaigns. Welcome to season four. Ah. <laughs> season four. I know. What? I never thought we'd get here. To be honest with you, just not, not just just the way I am with schedules and stuff. But yes, season four has finally arrived. Congratulations! Yeah. You're listening to. I think we've done. In total, over over a hundred episodes, with including bonus stuff. It's bonkers. That's insane. That also means I've got through one whole season. Yes, yes, you have. The DS Book Club. I am now seasoned. You are seasoned. You are no longer. S- you are no longer new co-host. You are just simply co-host. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. uh, well, my name is Fiona, and with me for season four the premiere, starting episode is mm. my my co-host. Hamilton. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello, listeners. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Fiona? Because you can I, answer. Yes, <laughs> you can, I can answer. 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 Hello, uh, woman in the front. Hello. I, I'm, I'm doing okay. Thank you. It's uh, we're British, so we have to talk about the weather. It's been a bit meh. Um, it's been crap today yeah. down in the southwest. It's yeah. been raining since I woke up to about about four in the afternoon. Then it stopped for a bit. Now I know it was a couple of weeks ago when we did record that episode. But when I asked you, and you were like, "Oh, it's like nineteen degrees mm. outside." I've been sitting outside, and I was like what and then instantly since then the weather has been all over the place i blame you for getting us into 19 degrees plus (laughs) i'm very sorry i'm also going to spain this weekend so 20 odd degrees incredibly jealous Mm. uh i uh because it's yes it is at the time of recording we're on our way to the easter holidays which Mm. for i don't know about you hamilton i always forget it's easter until somebody goes oh, by the way, you've got Friday off. And I go, why? And I go, oh, shit. <laughs> I I don't, yeah, exactly. And also, because it, I don't know if it, it, it's the same. We have Easter not on the same day or of the, no. of the it's a lunar cycle. And therefore it's random. Like we, yeah, it's very It, it changes all the, yeah, it's, it's the same in the US as well. And also, yeah, yeah. The, the, so the people who do observe it from various yeah. religions, it's actually much later. And it's just, it's, yeah. it's bonkers. And I always panic because mm. it's either... Is it too short? Is too long? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so it's Easter, and for me, I am just going up to see my parents. <laughs> that's okay. all I'm doing. Um, well, that's hopefully, nice. we warmer up there in in the north. Uh, that's what I'm. It's really is though. <laughs> it really is. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton, Hamilton. Yes. What is our topic of choice for today? What Ooh. are we doing to start doing? season four? Yes, we're doing something different we're also not doing something where we read about dungeons and dragons i know we are l- listening about the- listening about dungeons and dragons sure close yes, we'll go with that um we've been uh sharing and we're going to share with you three musical albums that either inspire help uh create atmosphere and generally sort of bring emotive clarity to our Dungeons and Dragons games. Whoa! How about that? That was that was pretty good. Yes. So we are talking about we've sort of the reason I sort of picked this topic was I was like we talked about it when we did our how, how to DM for the first time or top tips and stuff. Yes. You sort of was talking about music, and I was like, mm. well, I don't really use music in my games. And the more mm. I thought about it, and I talked about it a little bit on our Discord, I was like, actually, music is kind of important because you get the you know music. I always think the best films are music that you don't realise until you sort of go back mm. later and you go, oh, that is such a cracking scene because it's enhanced. Yes. It's so that underneath score thing. So yeah. I was like, right, there's only one person I know who has more musical knowledge than I ever will, and that's Hamilton. So yes, I challenge you to find free albums that you would sort of use to either inspire your RPGs for writing, if you mm. wanted to use them as a session thing, that's mm. totally fine as well. And I would do the same. And we would just mm. compare notes, as it were. Yeah. It was difficult to get it down to three. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my damnedest, and I think I, I got say- there. And then after extending to, me, to you, after thinking about them for a long time, going, oh, Fiona, what about this one? No, wait. No. Oh, yeah, we're going to go back to this one. <laughs> and then I've settled, but it was difficult. For you, was there any particular theme of what you were choosing? Yeah. Was there a, like, what, what, what was it that you were going for? So of the three that I've chosen, I went mm. for two that are very much like always staples in my sort of creative like when I want to listen to I put mm-hmm. these on and then one of them was definitely something related to my Mortborg fan- <laughs> phantom at the moment yeah, and I was like but I've been listening to it again and it was an album I used to listen to about probably 10 years ago now I think mm-hmm. when it came out that I listened to over and over and over mm-hmm. when I was when I was writing nav fiction and so like uh, so I but it always it just came back to me and I was like I love that album and I thought mm-hmm. it's a really good one and it kind of is a very much a accessibly 
D and D sort of music. Yes. So I thought I'd go with yeah. that. That was why. But yeah, there was lots of, as I said, the word that the other people that I used earlier that you didn't know also rans is in lots on the on the the top ten or something like that. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I th- yeah. I think the reason I picked three is because I mm. think it is incredibly difficult. Like I struggled yeah. as well. The, the what I did for my choosing of them was that it has mm. to be I, one has to be a film one has to be a tv show and then one has to be miscellaneous so Ah. so that because otherwise i would just pick so many film tracks so many video games so many things let's face it i know we'll talk it and somebody will go what you pick that over x thing because as as we'll sort of talk about you yeah we had to be very strict and pick an uh, one thing Mm. uh, rather than a whole artist or a whole Mm. composer that sort of thing because let's face it i could just say hans zimmer and be done Mm. with it (laughs) well exactly yeah exactly no it's so true Mm. and you were talking about musical like effect in a movie Mm. something that i read a great article about and i won't go too deep into there's a great article about his music in dunkirk and the sound Mm. of dunkirk and like oh my gosh that movie is incredible uh like music wise it's just sound wise yeah and you know that's really interesting because for me i never saw dunkirk so i'm like oh it's a war film with her. but i can imagine scoring an action mm. film a war film like that mm. actually is incredibly difficult like mm. i i went to see like war the one i can always remember is war horse because uh, i saw the play and stuff mm. like that. the music in that incredible and mm. for any kind of genre it is actually quite a difficult thing to do um like yeah. I, you think Another example would be Danny Elfman. <laughs> um, yeah. You might not like his stuff, and I'll say that. But yeah. if you listen, you if you listen to the Batman theme tune that he does, yeah. it's like very dark and mysterious and oh, conflicting and all mm. that sort of thing. But then he can do stuff like uh, any Tim Burton film, obviously. But Alice in yeah. Wonderland and Nightmare Before Christmas, all that sort of thing. Yeah, I think movies and music. There's so many good ones. I mean, the music. There's a really another great piece I read about um, Silence of the Lambs and oh, about the music yes. in that and how. What that does is, you know, that scene where they're going to the FBI are raiding the house yes. and you think it's the spoilers for a 20 yes. year old movie that yep. you think it's um, Buffalo Bill's house. And the music is like tense, 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 tense. And you're like so like racked in the music and going. And then suddenly they burst in the door. They realize it's not the space, but the music still builds. Yep. So you're still building, even though you know it's it's fine. It's, you know, it's not the right one. And yeah. it's like... And then it's like, oh no, the wrong house. And then yes, it flips it. The editing it on that you, bit is great yeah. as well. Yeah. And it mm. gives you that adrenaline that you would still have. It's still with you lingering into the next scene. And it's like... It just gives that sense of unease, which is like so. Music, I think, is terribly yeah, powerful. Yeah, certain. Yeah, I completely agree. Certain. If you watch any of your favorite sequences in mm. a film, the music in that, or the lack of music in that, could really oh, like yes. impound it. Let's start beating around the bush, so to yes. speak. Hamilton, what is your first? Oh album? my gosh, I'm going first. Yes, of course you are. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh no, I was going to use your first one to choose what my first one would be, but fine. Now, all the stiff got. I'm going to choose the Budos Band or Bodas Band. I, I say Budos Band. I actually don't know how you say it. And their particular album, uh, Into the Fog, uh, mm-hmm. which is, uh, have I got that right? I definitely make sure I've got that right. Cause I, think I always. It's Burnt Offerings. Oh, oh yes. The song is Into the Fog. The album is Bird Offerings. That's why I keep it. There was a moment where I was like, uh oh, someone no, didn't listen burnt, to the right album. <laughs> I will say it is Burnt Offerings by the Beatles yeah. Band. I like all their music. I chose this one because it's the first one I got into. To describe it is quite uh, complicated, but I think it's like, it's very much like Doom Funk, is yes. what I think is the best way of putting it. So it's like Doom Rock meets funk meets 70s psychedelia mm-hmm. I guess, meets big band mm-hmm. and what i love about it is it's got this real like movie quality to it it's like a movie soundtrack it's all instrumental mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. very much like i say like brass bandy but like with great like rhythms and beats and oh, it just kind of flows and it's constantly moving yes and it's kind of jazzy but not too experimentally jazzy but it's mm-hmm. like that sort of rhythmic flow Mm -hmm. and what what i like about it as like an inspiration is it it's kind of it's got so much in uh influences in that music Mm -hmm. that it feels like if you're thinking what i find when i'm thinking of something like any place and i just sort of bring that in it just kind of gives me this like feeling of like i can sort of find other places in it if that's Mm. a better way of putting it and so whatever i'm doing i feel like i find a rhythm in there or something that sort of works for what i'm doing and it kind of 
helps push me out of a boundary of like generic D and D ness, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. when I'm trying to do that sort of like when I come like so it's like this is just music I use, and, and for me, I've chosen many music that is when I'm trying to like inspire, mm-hmm. like coming up with like an atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I might even play some of the tracks I'm going to talk about, but majority of them are like just like trying to get your mindset we talked a lot about the planes on another show yeah and you mentioned it as well but it is that sort of like when you're trying to get your headspace into the abyss or into like what's it like in sigil or what's it like yeah. in uh pandemonium i think a few of these m- musical places can help you f- get your brain out of wherever you are i was reading reviews as as yeah. i got as, as one does um and yeah they described it as like because obviously on the front of this album as well yeah. there is a wizard <laughs> so yeah, it's like, a very um, led zeppelin uh yeah. got a gandalf style sort of cover yes so, yeah you got a wizard pointing at a like sort of a, an altar type thing with skulls all around it so you're like mm. you vaguely know what's going on there i think mm. um and yeah as you describe sort of it draws heavily from the late 60s to early 70s of well of dark arcane pro uh, prona metal and i was like Ooh. yeah okay well because i've read that first before i listened to it just to make sure yes and yeah i definitely get that and i that's the thing i got with most of your choices is i think i can imagine myself being in in sort of big worlds and sort of big like maybe urban settings as well that sort of yeah. um it almost made me think of because I've been watching it recently and I know people are going to go wait what um because I quite like it uh the watch the sort of adaptation oh, yeah. of uh Terry Pratchett's uh, guards guards and other things mm. that's not we won't talk about like if that's a good thing or a bad thing but that the way the world is presented I can imagine mm. this soundtrack being a part of it because yeah. it's just so so out there and uh, it really just fits the visual of that I really liked someone saying it was like Quentin Tarantino doing a Bond film <laughs> was another oh, re- review I and I was that. like yeah, I kind of get that. It's just got that. And the proto metal, like if anyone's like listened to that sort of 70s, sort of the sort of more like, because um, it was so heavily influenced by Lord of the Rings, a lot of the, mm. the, the heavy metal bands, like uh, famously the guy from T Rex, I've got his name, uh, Mark Bolan. Is it Mark Bolan? Yeah. Uh, uh, wrong person. <laughs> You're yeah, asking so, the wrong person. <laughs> so famous, the, the lead singer of T Rex was illiterate and used to have his partner read to him the, Lord, the Hobbit uh, like oh. all the time. And like, obviously, Led Zeppelin has songs that reference Gollum and Mordor and stuff like that. And, you know, it was a, and it was such a big thing at that sort of era. So there is a lot of like, and obviously metal and role playing games go together. I think it does. It's, it's a weird thing because you don't consider that. And yet it does. Obviously, I know yeah. we, we're talking about Merkborg just just now, yeah. but also, but it, it, I think it does because yeah. it's just that, that the harsh sort of tension, sort of the action yes. sort of sentiment. Like, yeah. yes, you can have classical bits to it, but I think the mm. actual metal, you get into the, into sort of the fight of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th- I think that's it. And I think it's just also like the culture seemed to overlap just because of the yeah. musical references. And I think it's that sort of alternative like uh, old school because nowadays it's more mainstream but i think it was like that sort of alternate alternate like alternative that's what i'm like, culture that's what i'm looking for yeah yeah that, yeah, had, yeah that sort of had that sort of relationship so people who liked music and got into like all win wacky psychedelic music were also probably like playing some dungeon dragons because <laughs> i you know what i'd love the idea that uh i'm sure i've referenced this on the show before there's like the bit where i stopped reading a lord of the rings was when gandalf gimli and aragorn all sit around smoking and legolas is singing a tune mm. and it's like oh great <laughs> the, what the elves singing i want the elves to be singing this sort of stuff yeah yeah, okay, <laughs> like, yeah definitely yeah like proper like <laughs> just like just 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 anything other than the sort of quiet oh, yeah. lilting stuff just to just to make a change because that'd be no, so fucking definitely. awesome <laughs> yeah just a little bit of um uh mad max chucked in yeah. for good measure yeah, exactly exactly yeah. i like that. is there any particular songs on this album that you're like <sighs> i know I'm, i know I'm gonna, i know it's gonna be Jeez, hard that is so hard and, or any of that stand out i think the first track is a great track and it just kind of kicks in and i don't it's one of those albums because it so flows it's just i can't really consider it track by track I, there, there are other ones where we talk about other albums where i can put a track down and say but on this one i would say it's so much of like a start at the beginning press play and let it go sort of album for me so yeah. into the fog that first one and then because after that just again looking at these the youtube yeah. the, the, the youtube link you sent to me yeah. um they're all they're all reasonably the same lengths about four to five minutes so if you yeah. were playing it in your game you can easily loop them or let it run all the way through and then back to the beginning as well which is quite good black hills is cool is a great song oh magus uh, tomahawk is a really good one as so it's got great beats so yes and but that we were talking, as I said, about the Burnt Offering album. I think the latest album, which is Long in the Tooth, 
I would say is the next one to go to after that. I think, and then go back to the beginning. But like, it's like, <laughs> like it's kind of funny. But that's kind of like the long the tooth one is definitely it's just much more funkier and much mm. more like beat heavy. It's my ex- example of like no words so you can write. Yes, great atmosphere and environment, and get yes. it on five point one surround sound if you can. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Get it on the best speakers I know, you I can. Know, like, I make fun of you, but like you do have the setup for it. <laughs> I have 5.1 over there. Yeah, it's over there. I see it off the screen. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think like as a start, as an opener for yeah. a one to, to, to listen to, I completely agree. I think it is a really, like you said, leaving it to go all the way through. It's yeah. one of those ones where I can't necessarily tell like when the next song really yeah. starts per se and i quite mm. like that in songs as well because then i'm like yeah. i'm not always going oh what's that one bit you know because it makes me mm. want to listen to the whole thing i know i had to listen to everything anyway mm. but i yeah no really good first choice really really enjoyed it well, what was your first place then right okay <laughs> so if we were gonna flip this a little bit yeah I'll, i will use my film choice first yes the film i picked you know what i didn't realize this is how it, I, not interesting. I genuinely thought it came out maybe like four or five years ago. It came out twelve years ago. I know uh, because film. I saw it on New Year's Eve. Did you? Twenty ten to eleven, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Uh, or two thousand nine sh- to two thousand ten. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, that was yeah, it. Right yeah, about there. yeah it's, I remember going. I was so excited to see this in the cinema. Even though I will say I hadn't seen the original at the time, the trailer had excited me that much, which Whoa. I know is thing. So I am talking about Tron Legacy, the soundtrack which was created by, of course, Daft Punk. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, as soon as you say Daft Punk, you're like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. Like everything about Tron Legacy yeah. and Tron, the Tron universe as well. For those of you who have been living under a rock, I do have a quick synopsis of what. Tron Legacy is. There is slight spoilers in it, just before you go in, but I would mm. recommend watching the trailer for it, because it is so badass, so... and I, I think the CGI really holds up. That's why when I was looking back to it, yeah. I was like, whoa, actually the first, a first example I remember of the de-aging CGI. Yes, yes. Which is that... very ubiquitous now, but that was the sort of first big time they'd done it was, that. It was stunning as well, and again, mm. it doesn't look too terrible, but I wonder if because they do it it only has certain parts where you yes. compare the actor to the person. Yeah. But yes, so uh, the synopsis is, so when Flynn, the world's greatest video game creator, sends out a secret signal from an amazing digital realm, his son discovers a clue and embarks on a personal journey to save his long-lost father. And, and then the Wikipedia goes, with the help of the fearless female warrior Quora, <laughs> father and son venture through an incredible cyber universe and wage the ultimate battle of good versus evil, mm. which is brilliant. And I, I will say it does have Olivia Wilde in it at, at her peak, which she was just in everything. And she's brilliant in it. Oh, she, she looks so badass. Like yeah. uh, all the outfits look cool and everything like that. And it has one of the best soundtracks I think of any sort of sci-fi cyberpunk film ever oh yeah I've done it boom done down it goes dropped I must admit the first words that came out of my mouth when I left that cinema to my wife was um that is the Vangelis of our of our generation is what I said when I left that thing and I felt I've still I don't know if I still hold that but it's very close I still think it is like one of the best i don't know yeah it's one of the best modern sci-fi soundtracks ever i I completely agree yeah and for those who don't know vangelis created the soundtrack for the original blade runner Mm -hmm. and has done obviously a ton of other things as well but that but just just to sort of but yeah it is just one of those things where again you could listen to the whole soundtrack there is a little bit of talking in it i completely forgot about right Mm. sort of on one of the tracks which i like in a way because it sort of sets the scene but obviously if you're using Mm -hmm. it in a game it's a bit ah rubbish um but it does sort of trans it, again there's mm. that sort of whole narrative through there are bits of it which are super like high you know high speed chase wise mm. you know where they're doing certain things in the, in the arena then they've got you know the slower bits there's even some bits of classical music in it mm. that with hardly any sort of electronica in it and that's pretty cool as well the reason i sort of picked this one so i remember again when it came out and i saw it and i downloaded the soundtrack i listened to it on repeat for like yeah two months yeah uh, specifically when i was commuting because mm. i felt so badass <laughs> i was like i thought i was in the matrix i'm like yeah. doing the commuter rush hour like formula one round the tube i was on the jubilee like... line as well at the time when i was commuting so i was like yes like if people don't know the jubilee line is all very stainless steel and yes, very modern yeah it's is, very cool it yeah there's so much about it like, again it's very emotive and mm. yeah i just i've just written down songs here like so the overture is pretty amazing you can imagine it's just 
starting it like if you're like welcome to mm-hmm. the dome and it just like yeah. you know, it's yeah. like opens up huge horizons sort of thing. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the grid everyone recognizes. Uh, the recognizer yeah. is also a good tune. Yeah, and you can imagine if you slaps that song. <laughs> oh, it's just as, and it's one of those ones again. You can imagine like it's like the beginning of the Matrix or whatever. Where mm. it's like a montage, and you could be describing to your players. You see this, and it cuts away. This, this. If you're if you're one of those DMs that sort of mm. really likes to be the movie director which i do love by the way like creating yeah. those scenes and doing the monsters and then we settle the camera on this thing so i can mm. imagine you if you're planning your session if you want to do the big opener using some mm. of those songs would be good like the game has changed as well d-rez though is the best track mm, d-rez is so good that is the best track though that one i used to get to it and then go a repeat a repeat a repeat because yeah, <laughs> yeah. d-rez is so good when they play the track in the movie when it's Daft punk in the movie with oh what's his name it's um it's michael sheen michael sheen isn't it yeah and he's just yeah. loving himself like he's oh like, my yes. gosh he's like i get to play bowie in a movie basically which should have been bowie's play you know, yeah, you know. So, yeah, again he plays like um the host of a nightclub called end of the line and he's just mm. you just look up and when he's introduced he's just like jamming away on an air guitar and then mm. he's like ah and you're like it, it looks a bit like the character he plays now in good omens a little bit but it completely actually, yeah. batshit crazy um and he's honestly michael sheen is one of the best things because you're like oh good for him oh he's really loving this oh good yeah. that's nice i like that you know what? it's got a, like great cast apart from the main character i forgot yes. it's yeah i'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna say i said like yeah. it's fine but it's just like yeah. Olivia Wilde, who I've been a fan of since the OC, because like yes. she is the coolest, oh. one of the coolest. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. And then um, Jeff Bridges is Jeff incredible. Jeff Bridges, who's stunning. And, and like, you know, it's obviously In everything. Everything is great. And then you've just got Mr. Nobody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I wonder if they deliberately picked that sort of thing yeah. so that anyone could imprint on him. And yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He is the, the Bella of Twilight, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of film references <laughs> tonight, yes. friends. That's what's happening. Yeah, here. exactly. And I was reading up on this. There could be a sequel in the works. Mm. They've been talking about it for ages. Yeah, it was meant to be like one right away, wasn't there? Yeah, and it's got pushed back. And what was interesting, it's the film, uh, obviously Tron Legacy, when that came out in 2010, set 28 years later in story time, but also after the original release of Tron itself. So mm. now we've got another sequel at some point. They've got like, you know, they've written stuff, etc. So you think, are they still going to be like, you know, 12, mm. 15 years later or whatever? Yeah. So will Olivia Wilde still be in it? You know, because I'll just see it for her. Yeah, if she's in it, main character, I'll, I'll yeah, watch it. I'd watch that, exactly. Yeah. If you're looking for stuff that's like flying or a sort of a light feeling, there's like the Son yeah. of Flynn and the Solar Sailor section is really good. Nocturnal, some classical music there. Yeah. And Disc Wars, uh, that's very warlike, lots of drums yes. and stuff. And and then Clue as a chase scene, I thought would be mm. really like, again, the music of that is just very. That's a good choice, actually. I like that. That is good. I basically just talked through the whole album a little bit there. Mm. But because again, what you will find with this film and with my second choice as well, is there's always a theme for each character that you hear throughout yeah. the whole thing. And one thing i'll come to in my second one is that i do love the idea of attaching a theme to maybe a villain or a mm. recurring character that you can play over as you're prepping and then you maybe if you want to introduce it into your scenes you're like oh because then you get excited going, wait they're coming the villain is coming you know so it's good though <laughs> it's good yeah. it's like i used when i did a big boss fight with my home game i got i told i think i mentioned this before i got the jewel of the fates on a one hour long <gasps> episode thing and just put that i literally were just going along i just had some normal tunes background sort of music and then i just went then you hear this sudden crackling next door and i went enter and it went Duh! and they were like what and, it's <laughs> like, yeah, bah, bah, bah. and they were like and they were just like oh my gosh and it just like made the whole exp- atmosphere just like rise so and they cool. were yeah it was so yeah. cool the final thing i wanted to say on it really was like, yes we've sort of mentioned it but the, if you were looking for some stuff similar and you were like mm. well, I'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of daft punk and then you, i mm. go well you're wrong um <laughs> it's a blade runner and then obviously blade runner 2049 yeah and inception was the other inception because yeah again Hans Zimmer but mm. again it, it, that idea of worlds sort of imploding or coming around you and just the impossible thing again I was kind of thinking Planescapey as well again because yeah. we've been talking about it so much for mm. another project but just this idea of worlds again for me as I was describing on this I sometimes I find it overwhelming that I can't even visualize it but I always love yeah. a good tune to go with it because then you're like okay this is impossible yeah. but there, I, there is music <laughs> and therefore I, I I don't know I know where I am in yes this, like I can feel the immenseness of it i guess those are my other choices like when you were saying when you said like if you're gonna say a film i'd be like 
yes, definitely, definitely Blade Runner, definitely yeah. Blade Runner 2049. I think they're great. For me, the other ones that come up, if I was going for soundtracks, there's more games, but like mm, go for it. off the top of my head then is definitely Dark Souls, Dark Souls yes. 3, great sort of powerful Ooh. music. The Witcher 3, yeah. it's great mm-hmm. battle music. You can go great on on the internet and find hour-long versions of that. Yeah. And then for um, something a bit more interesting would be the last of us ones which is the gustavo santaiola ones oh, yeah oh, which is kind of oh. like good if you're doing that sort of on the edge of your sort of uncomfortable yes. sort of urban adventures i'd say it's a really good mm. ones for that oh it, i just cry every time i listen to that soundtrack so <laughs> i just I have very big emotional i know, I know. <laughs> when you hear the song the song at the end it's just no. like you just get oh, sent back. i can't i can't because i'll cry <laughs> Anyway, what's your second choice, Hamilton? (laughs) Second choice. So my next choice was the Mars Volta's album. Which one did you listen to? Was it the Amputecture or Francis and Mew? Amputecture. Yeah, good. Right, okay, so (laughs) Amputecture. (laughs) But again, as with all these, listen to all of the albums, but um, listen to only the first three albums. Don't bother the later ones, they're all crap. Basically. (laughs) (laughs) And the third one is actually the one I chose, which is the, what I'd say is the, the definitely the it's the less punky it's the yes. less sort of like poppy ish pop punk to them but to give you an idea of this band they are very talented musicians yes. super talented musicians uh brazilian and oh i'm gonna get this let me double check this i want I, i've got it as they are an american progressive rock band yes from... well, whilst you're doing that so i again looking up from my things um so yes this album came out in 2006 mm-hmm. and they, as i read about it it's sort of it, they called it an album with, with without a single unifying narrative fair enough inspirations were very diverse ranging from the recent u.s immigration marches to news stories of a possessed nun which i was like oh interesting yeah. they are bixler zavala is a mexican uh, parentage but obviously grew up in the united states and then a uh, puerto rican which is omar omar rodriguez lopez who is also puerto rican so there's a lot of spanish language in the music there's a lot of like in latin vibes and musicality to it as well so there's definitely sort of salsa and uh, sort of beats that you can kind of feel and very much those sort of like three-step uh, modes it's just it's a range of jazz yes. jazzy soundscapes songs that go on yeah. for 10 minutes 14 minutes and it's just i chose this one because this is more the soundscapey one of all of them mm-hmm. like you know the first starts off with that ringle on a on a xylophone yeah you know, and it just takes you and it's that really that sort of like takes you in and it then sort of yes. has this weird sort of sound that kind of comes in and it's like you've entered a new plane you've entered a new experience and then it takes you on this journey and it's like pink floyd turned to a billion like yes. it's just a hundred percent yeah i definitely feel that drummers they work with are uh, i'm gonna say some names here i've just got to remember his name john John Theodore, who you will also know from playing with bands like Rage Against the Machine, uh, mm-hmm. Stats of Russia in One Day's Line, and then he also played uh, in on in Cubus as well as he did tours with um, Queens of Stone Age. Um, and I saw him live at Queens of Stone Age as well. But anyway, he's an incredible drummer, so underrated outside mm. of the big world everyone just goes oh dave grohl and the guy from blink 102 um <laughs> that's what we will say isn't it like uh, i forgot do they <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah the blink uh, travis barker and dave grohl always considered like oh the top drummers modern wow. day living drummers but i say john theodore is top huh? top 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 as a drummer myself I, I, that's what people always say to you but anyway i see now i this totally makes sense <laughs> <laughs> this is why i'm promoting drummers because i feel like they're always forgotten i but think so too music wise fantastic they the concepts for these for the three first three albums are really interesting the second yeah. one most which we don't talk about but like is uh, they found an old notebook of someone and they basically made this concept album where oh. They created like a beat and then they went in different rooms and had like the standard beat and a key and just recorded individual pieces to go with it. And then I know, and it's insanely amazing. And there's a 35 minute track on the second album, which I don't, which is great. But like the third, this, this third album, Tetragrammaton starts you off in this long winding sort of um, Mm. world that is dark, mysterious and sort of, 
it brings you in these different sort of spaces mm-hmm. and then you move on to oh, let's pick oh, our Curus atonement is first one then tetragrammaton takes you that yeah. you then get some sort of like there's some standard tracks in there like Fiscara's eyes is kind of an Asilios magdalena which are much more spanish and very mm-hmm. simple but again why i chose this as i said was it's otherworldly mm-hmm. in in the fact that it is worldly uh, mm-hmm. if you know what i mean like it is everything of our world it again like buddha's man it takes so many influences everywhere yeah. play, john frisanti plays guitar on them from red hot chili peppers people will know that as well there's famous oh. people uh so like big like they're big like musical sort of groove talented, and so yeah. yeah talented and bring lots of people in and with that all that influence builds these very unique spaces that i think again if you're trying to find yourself outside outside your box trying mm-hmm. to get your brain away from yeah the everyday yeah i guess because i think yeah just to expand your sort of limit because I, I i will admit i had no idea of any of these bands you sent me before <laughs> before yesterday but i you know what that's the thing so i i asked you to really think about it and i love stuff like this too that is out there because you know, we in a sense of like, and, and I don't want you to do down on because we've just talked about how wonderful Lord of the Rings soundtrack is yeah. and all these other soundtracks. Is, but other people will have heard of them. Um, yes. Your players will know them. And whilst that's good, mm. I like the idea that you can just really open other people's minds up with them and try yeah. different things and stuff like that. And yeah, this this is great as well. I, I did like, like you said, this sort of the Spanish influences there were really amazing. And I just yeah. thought, oh, it was really good to listen to. No, it is a lot of fun. And, and it is that. It's that sort of like, I just think... Yeah, as you said, everyone's going to, uh, people are going to know the Lord of the Rings, the Skyrim soundtrack, which I was going to use as my one. I know. Because <laughs> it is so good. And it, it is, is so like, good. it is great for like giving you that expanse of like mountains. And I think uh, the games that I'm just playing at the moment as well are very plain heavy. And I think we talk a lot about them, I guess. So that's another reason for it. And it's mm. just also like, I think it's also if you're doing urban encounters again as well like you've got to remember that the cities of these places that we go to like Waterdeep, are just are, are like urban yes. h- hubs of all these different um all these different races of like beings as well as like people from different townscapes it's like london you know and yes. london is the sound of london is just like all these influences of like if you think of it you can't pin it down it's grime it's it's yeah. as much as it's the sort of rock of the 60s and the who as mm. much as it's you know oh i don't know yeah, well, like, it's, it's not just yeah. one thing exactly Absolutely. And, and 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 we do get we do fall into those stereotypes we do fall into those tropes of like oh it's the queen uh, yeah. like royal like um jerusalem all that sort of thing yeah. it's no it's not no, and exactly. i love that and i love yeah no I, I really enjoyed this soundtrack this this album i thought it was really good and i'll definitely be listening back to it again this is the one where it's like ah oh, there's a 16 minute track <laughs> i won't hear the radio version of that will i uh, so, no. which i love and that's the thing i, I i'm always surprised because it is it's so difficult unless it's just mm. two people talking on a podcast it's so difficult to create art or music yeah longer than three minutes and then you're yes. like what oh god i tell and you like... the one that 34 minute track on the second album france mute cassandra gemini mm. you it's just incredible it's just like <laughs> it is just like i didn't choose it because i think this one is i think this one's the one you should listen to if you're trying to come up with ideas but musically that is that is okay, work of genius <laughs> Well, I, well, we'll obviously we'll be listing everything we talk about when I listen back to it because I'm like, yep, 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 yep. So <laughs> we will definitely include it so that people people want to listen. So what's so just so just so we know what's the name of that second album? Though? Sorry, the second album is called Francis the Mute. People might know it. there was a fa- there was a they had a single off that called The Widow, which was in the 2000s. It was it has a video. It was on Kerrang at the time quite a lot. Wow, <laughs> it's very much a three minute twenty song. <laughs> you know, it's like done it was like the the, obviously the company you know the big company people said could you do us a single and they were yep. like yeah okay done one mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but no Makes really sense. really great fun and just uh, again if you're trying to get to your i also use it just if you if you're one of those people like me who needs chaos in the background to help you focus this is mm-hmm. this is what i use that for i i don't know how you do that i don't i <laughs> i can barely barely have any music on when i'm doing anything so this, this is why it was a, quite a joy for me to listen to him like so this is what hamilton's doing when i'm trying to call him to ask about things <laughs> he's got all the song in the background yeah exactly <laughs> so that that's my second choice what was your second choice then i went for <laughs> tv show yes i went for doctor who Series five of the most recent series, 
the soundtrack by Murray Gold. Now, mm. I, I know I know the answer to this, Hamilton, but Hamilton, have you watched any Doctor Who? <laughs> <laughs> I have watched very small amounts of Doctor Who, probably in total a maximum about 30 minutes of total Doctor Perfect. Who time. Perfect. I obviously know... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that yes. track. Oh yes, yeah. Everyone, everyone knows the main theme, um, <laughs> even though it has gone through many, many um, yeah. variations of. And of course, I and this is what I want to say for this one particularly. So, why did I pick season five? Why out did of, you pick season five? Yes, why of, did I pick season five? All the out other of, seasons. Out of so many seasons, for context, so Murray Gold wrote the majority of all the Doctor Who's up until very recently. I think season five. I'm going to say it is one of the best seasons of Doctor Who, like complete sort of thing. You you can start at the beginning as a brand new person, just get into it. And you have the, the 12 episodes, I think it is. And then it's sort of complete. And then it goes on, obviously, from then on. Mm. But I just thought it was just such a perfect season in terms of stories, in terms of exploration, but also in terms of the characters as well. We have the Doctor, uh, who's played by Matt Smith at the time. Uh, is this and his again, this, first episode season? This is his first, first season. I wondered um, if that's why it said Doctor Who eleven at the beginning one. Yes, the beginning of, yeah. yes. So that that's yeah. The the new theme came in there and all that sort of thing. It also introduced Karen Gillan as the assistant. That was her first big sort of role before Nebula. pretty much taking over the whole of Marvel universe yeah. and like having her own shows and stuff. Like that. Also has Arthur Darville in it. He's done lots of things like theatre and stuff. But he also is a musician, um, which is always quite nice. The three of them were really good friends during filming. I, it was various pictures of them just all hanging out and like talking about music and stuff, which is very nice. But yes, I think it is the most complete Doctor Who series. And I think it, all Doctor Who music in this series is perfect for any genre. So obviously when you think Doctor Who, you think, ah, oh, sci-fi, ah, oh, space. But it's a time travelling show as well. So you can go back in time. You can go to fantasy stuff. Use lots of urban stuff. Aliens also attack London quite a lot. Um, there are chase scenes. There are big cliffhangers. There's mysteries. There's even lots of comedic stuff. Certainly with sort of how alien the Doctor is. Sort of mm. not understanding things, but just, hello, I'm the Doctor. I'm here to help. There is a song called The Sun's Gone Wibbly. Exactly. For example. <laughs> it's like, something's not right here. I do love how for someone who can travel space and time, he does have a lot of th things to deal with in London, doesn't he? Yeah. Or, or Cardiff, uh, <laughs> when it was based in Cardiff. <laughs> but what I what I quite like is all the music is and the orchestra as well is all based in Wales. Mm. So you have the BBC uh, National Orchestra of Wales and the, and the mm. choir there in Wales as well. And essentially the synopsis, I won't go into too much detail of, of Doctor Who fifth, uh, fifth series because I do recommend people watch it and just enjoy it for what it is. Because again, it's just, it's one of those ones where it has individual serial bits and then it's like a big overarching thing which i think has a great payoff in the end so yeah the, the theme is the doctor has regenerated lands in amelia pond's garden when she is a, a small girl and there are cracks in her wall so he's a plasterer he yeah he sort of and then he like <laughs> opens it and there's like a whole other world on the other side he goes, oh right okay <laughs> that shouldn't happen there goes back in the tardis comes back but he comes back much too late and, and, and amelia pond's all grown up into amy pond and then it sort of goes through there about her adventures and then bringing rory who is boyfriend then fiance then partner and what's quite cool about it in a way is that i i will sort of talk about it so you've got songs uh, songs you've got music like little amy can i come with you amy in the tardis and amy's fiend they're all connected to amy pond and amelia pond and mm. it has the same sort of refrains going throughout mm. and it's quite sad um, a lot of the Doctor Who season five, again, not to spoil it too much, there's a big bit of it about grief and losing mm. someone. And there's an episode called uh, Vincent and the Doctor, which talks about Vincent van Gogh and mm. about how he struggled with stuff. And a Amy sort of goes, oh, well, I'll make it better. We'll, 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 we'll do the sunflower thing. We'll do all this thing. Oh, cool. And then at the end, obviously, he still passes away suddenly. And it is so sad because um, obviously Amy thinks she's saved him yeah. and he hasn't. It's just, you know, it made his life a little brighter in the last couple of days and stuff. And the Doctor is so beautiful at organising it. And the music, when I think it's called Love Vincent. Oh, mm. I, I'm tearing up now just thinking about it because it was so sad. Oh. It's interesting because I, I, I really like the music on it. But mm. I think, like, the way you're talking about it, I think the emotional co connection that you've got is from is from yeah. the relationship to the story as well, which yes, is really interesting. Yes, hundred percent. And I think yeah. that's that's the thing is that if you're as a mm. DM writing this sort of stuff, having that emotional connection, you're like, okay, where can I put this into mm. my story? So I would hundred percent 
like I sort of said mentioned before, that idea that yes, this refrain comes back to this particular kind of yeah. person. Maybe they are an NPC they always keep meeting, mm. but at different points and they keep missing and then they have to save them and can they save them? That sort of thing. Yeah. On the other side, on the flip of it, you have stuff like I am the doctor, which is like heroic, like montage theme again, time passing, sort of like uh mad man with a box, which is like mystery and wonder horror aspect to it you have time of the angels and the silurians so again two big sort of doctor who monsters uh the time of the angels is a great part of a series of where you know the weeping angels which people most people will know about they are attacking a big cavern and it is terrifying when you're watching it just the way they're sort of slowly coming towards you and stuff but it also mm. under the ground a little bit of electronica there as well there's a good range of sounds in this in terms of like i said like um and i guess that's as I'm, I'm again guessing yes, <laughs> that it's because yes. it goes to so many different places yes. that it does have quite a very in the, there's sixty odd tracks in here. There's a lot of tracks. I will. Uh, yeah, don't, do not worry, folks. I will not be putting all sixty on them on our little podcast. No. Like, after this. But there was definitely like yeah, was it a useful striker? I can't remember which. Yes, one. There was the useful striker is a great one because that's when the doctor just has to pretend to be a lodger, a normal person, yeah. and goes and plays football for a bit, mm. and it's, it's quite funny. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and it was kind of like that was kind of, I don't know. I just remember that song coming out to me and going, "This is kind of different," and it was quite and it was compared to what else was going on, and mm. I, didn't, I didn't I had no idea what it was to do with. I thought striker was not a football term. I thought it was yeah. like he was some sort of strike force or something yeah. i don't know the one i do want to big do a big shout out to the one that really sort of connected with me is mm. words win wars one of the last ones so this is at the end of the season it's a big a uh, big sort of speech the doctor is shouting if you imagine stonehenge he's sh- he is shouting to the, to these, the sky is full of spaceships and stuff and i've got I've got the speech here, so I'm going to read out the speech. I know, and I will, and I know it will, it will not make sense unless you go listen to words win wars. But this mm. is the speech, and I think this is what sealed it for me. So, come on, look at me. No plan, no backup, no weapons worth a damn, and oh, something else I don't have anything to lose. So, if you're sitting up there in your silly little spaceships with your all your silly little guns, and you got any plans on taking the Pandorica tonight? Just remember who is standing in your way. Remember every black day I ever stopped you. And then, and then, do the smart thing. Let somebody else try first. How cool is that speech, right? It's a cool speech. (laughs) It's a cool speech. It's a great speech. And that music as well, proper, like, puts it on a knife edge. You're like, whoa. And then... And then the ep- and and then the episode sort of ends on a cliffhanger after that. So I, that that's why it's like that track. Yeah. You have to have that speech somewhere. Mm. Whether it's a DM that has it <laughs> or yeah. a player has it, I don't know. But I just thought, yeah, and that that's what put the cherry on the top was that words yeah. win wars. Again, I did like that track. I just didn't. I didn't have. I didn't. I need to. Oh. I need to watch some. I, I know, need to watch. Some I know. I, I had such a strong emotion to it. I think. Yeah. That, I, I completely agree. I think having strong emotions to like stuff you love, you instantly get that soundtrack. If you think, oh, that was a great film. That was a great TV show. Mm. Look at the soundtrack. Put it yes. in the Spotify playlist. Definitely <laughs> do. Hundred percent. No, seriously, that is a, that is a top. That is a serious point. And I will say, if you want similar soundtracks, just listen to any other Murray Gold, <laughs> Doctor Who yeah. stuff. I'd actually recommend if you spot an episode of Doctor Who that you just again, I would go from the thumbnail on the iPlayer <laughs> rather than the title, and just try it and listen, and then yeah. you go, ah, oh, One Piece, and that was quite good. Look for the series, and you'll probably easily find it. They're usually well titled if you can match other things. But yeah, hundred percent, try that out. So there you go. <laughs> All right, Hamilton, bring us home. Bring us home. Bring us home. What's your final choice? I really now want to talk about Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. I'm not... can, can I talk? Oh, okay. I'm going to do that. I'm going to change it up because I feel like I want to say it this good because I think I, I, I've changed my mind. You will know it. You know it anyway, don't you? So, a small confession, I've never played Skyrim. <laughs> I've now listened to that the, the, the mix you sent me. Yeah. Cool. Um, and I love, I love that. But I've never played Skyrim. So okay, that's that my fine. own fault. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to choose Skyrim then for my third one, as I mentioned. And yes, I can't believe that omission. That is just terrifyingly I bad. I was too but busy watching Doctor Who. That's what clearly. Happened. I suggest <laughs> Fiona. What you do now is you go buy yeah. it on one of the billion ways you can play that game because you could literally play it on a calculator these days because it's on every, <laughs> it's on every single system. It is. And just enjoy the one of the best games ever made 
that's a role playing game. Like mm-hmm. it's just incredible. Soundtrack by is it Jeremy Soul? Yeah, Jeremy Soul. Yeah. Last night? Again, fantastic choices. And I will mm. say this: this the it's interesting because you sent me something called the Skyrim Explor- uh, Exploration, Exploration Suite. Suite. Yes, which is done by this YouTuber who I won't. I can't pronounce. I just one of those things. Yeah. The Sargeras Two. Basically, taken all the tracks from the Skyrim soundtrack which is great in general but i chose a exploration suite that he's i don't know if he's come up with this but i've made that playlist myself on mm. here which takes a few of the tracks which you only played when you're out and about wandering yes. in skyrim and it's definitely it's just it's just mixed together and it's, it's just, just mixed together in a beautiful way it mixes it more interesting than you can do if you do it yourself there's a thing called the um atmospheres skyrim atmospheres which mm. on that youtube link kind of cuts them in and in between the sort of uh, transitions between them so this person's done a lot of, done a bit of work i'd say over yeah, a lot of work on it but this album is my this is the one that you can play for you can play in a game and you yep. can listen to if you just put this on you will be instantly transported to your big wide mountains your big yes. grand I've got my world in front of me and I will create, (laughs) you know, and (laughs) that is the sort of music it is. And it's like, I don't know if I can describe this, but there is a, there is a music that creates Mm. a feeling within me that certain songs do. Mm. And it's like, and this is, I don't know if it's particular to me or it's particular people who live in the, grew up in the countryside, but this sort of like, I grew up in the countryside and there's these sort of moments when I used to just go for a walk with like my parents or my grandparents in like a cold frosty morning i used to live in very classic english chocolate box sort of like rolling hills yes. like little copses a few little villages like not cities or anything like that and mm-hmm. walled gardens and you know rosemary yes. and thyme you know all these sorts of like very like particularly sort of like no technology sort of mm-hmm. worlds that the 80s was <laughs> the early 80s the late 80s early 90s was and it kind of but it's that sort of just like complete nature and this music does that as like hits on that and i think it just transports you to that sort of mindset yeah. of like the openness and i the love, sort of... I, I yeah i completely agree that anything that takes you back to because obviously i've had emotional reactions to films and then tv shows yeah. we just discussed but the idea that you can just obviously takes you back to something that you treasure yeah. as a memory well, yeah, has so precious and so yeah. unique because no one will have the same experience yeah. as you do. So, a hundred percent, anything that does that, and I, yeah, I completely agree. And other YouTube videos on hmm. this person's uh, thing, it's all Mass Effect, to be fair. Yeah, but they're long, you know, ass- yeah. and there's like emotional sweets, the extended versions, that's sort of yeah. And I, what I like about this is that it hmm. is a deliberate mix. Yes. To, like for the length of it but it's like mm. here is the theme in mind and yeah. that sort of thing so i think yeah i'm sure i'm sure this is obviously just one f- oh, yeah one episode, one track in the several um yes. skyrim inspired one. but i guess if you put like sweet or exploration mm. or something like that you'll find equally like I, people yeah. will probably don't know Lord of the Rings you will like recognize some of these tracks mm. when you listen to critical role yes you will, because they have good mates with the Bethesda crew, and oh, therefore they have. You will note it. You will recognise some of these. Far Horizons. I heard the other day when I was mm-hmm. listening. Awake. I heard the other day, and there's the. Um, I think it's Aurora. Is what Matt mm. always plays whenever he's in a uh, in a palace or a temple. <laughs> Trust me, like always that. Track. I think it's that's the track. There's one track he always plays. Like I know that one. Yeah. That when I hear that Far Horizons music, right? Mm. It just literally like. <sighs> I can just relax and mm-hmm. just get and go into that zone. And now this is when I'm trying to do my like, okay, I'm going to think of my classic D and D settings, the kind world. of make my world. I'm doing big hand gestures here, everyone. <laughs> yeah, everyone, the big hand gestures over the boxes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just um, yeah, I I think it's it's great. And if you were going to put this on for your players, like mm. obviously you can't do it if you're doing a stream, but if you're doing this at home, put this on when you like just the beginning of adventure or yeah. that sort of sense of wanderlust would just be instilled instantly i think with these mm-hmm. tracks because you'll just be like so you come out of your village you've done that first encounter you know something like that moment you know the first like save yeah, the town first from town. the evil mayor yeah. and then you go on the big road and you press play mm-hmm. and you'll be like where are you going next and you'll be like oh that's the that's yeah. the the world is open to you I now mm-hmm. you know the, the bridge is in grand theft auto have been unlocked <laughs> you know yeah but- yeah <laughs> it's that sort of moment 
as I, I've not played the game or anything like that, but I was listening to it. I was like, I felt so much in it. And I know there is, mm. like, like for me, the, the same similar reaction I would have had with Horizon Zero Dawn or Forbidden mm. West. Same sort of thing in a way, like, again, big open space, beautiful, like, again, mm. visualizing the beautiful cliffs, edge, and stuff like that. Mm. Here, again, I say, I yeah, I agree. Like, I sort of lived in sort of uh, the northwest of England, so there was greenery around, but we didn't do too much of that. But I can imagine if you're doing like peat districts or the lake districts mm. or something like that. Like uh, going mm. around the, the big lakes and just up on the hills yeah. would be amazing with the soundtrack on. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, compared to like Tron Legacy when you're commuting. <laughs> yeah. Skyrim, but when you're well, up and about. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I feel like what we've done so far is kind of given you your sort of like your cyberpunk super industrial modernism. Yes. We've given you your crazy planes music, you know, yes. your sort of your sort of all sounds of the universe music and yes. then something very you know, big worldy, big world. Yeah, that you 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 can see for miles. And you're like, oh god, I've got to go over there. Can I fast big... travel? <laughs> yes, exactly. And your big and your big speeches, which is what you've got. Yeah, and your big, big speeches. Get... God, I love a big speech. No, completely agree. So, with that, then, what yes. is your third choice then? My third choice is a miscellaneous sort of thing. So, I it was going to be a video game. And then uh, I remembered about a month or so ago, I went to go see a play uh, and it is called The Ocean at the End of the Lane, which is based on the same novel written mm. by the one and only Neil Gaiman, who I am a massive fan of. And I remember it's very odd, actually, because the play and the book itself is about remembering and forgetting and all that sort mm. of thing. So I'd forgotten I'd read this book. And essentially all it is, the synopsis is that an unnamed protagonist returns back to his childhood hometown for a funeral. And there he sort of revisits an area where him and his sister sort of grew up. And he remembers that there was a young girl called Letty Hemstock who used to sort of play with them and who claimed that the pond behind her house was an ocean. He stops by the house where Letty lived with her mother and grandmother and encounters them and then starts to remember the forgotten instances of the past. And it goes back to the summer where clearly Letty isn't all what she seems. Um, And she uses the magic or the weave of the world to keep their area, their little bits safe. And unfortunately, this protagonist lets in a creature. You can see where this is going, so to speak. So I went to go see this play. And first of all, again, emotional reaction to it. Because I was like, oh, it was a great book. I remember that. The staging, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good stagecraft. Oh, uh... mm. Yeah, no, it, something special about a really... Because it's really like, you have to really think hard, and you know they've put so much effort into making yes. three-dimensional space out of two-dimensional sort of... Exactly, yeah. and it's it was an interesting one, because it was it, it's a national theatre, which I am a big fan of the national theatre. I think they Beautiful do incredible well. plays. A, a brilliant building. It was very interesting, because it was very minimal... Uh, for things they obviously had props and everything like that but they had beautiful stagecraft in the fact where somebody would appear like a door would come up out of the stage like mm. like up someone would go through it and then they'd walk off and then that same person would just suddenly appear at the other side of the stage there was a soundtrack for this play so it's very rare to have a play that has a soundtrack that's not a musical this is purely the sort of the incidental music as each scene was playing and it's brilliant <laughs> <laughs> I, again it's I, it's for me it does what the Doctor Who does, but on a much shorter level. So it's got only a couple of uh, tracks. I think roughly about sort of tenish, and each track mm. again it fits to a scene. So the certain the first one is the opening scene. It's a bright sunny day. The protagonist is learning suddenly. Oh, mm. I used to live here. Oh yeah, there was a girl Letty, and and then it sort of goes back into the time that aspect. Yes, yeah, so that sort of lighted area thing. So it could be the reveal of a god or a deity or of, of a holy place because we've got definitely got choirs in there through the wardrobe is my favorite track i think I, if i had to pick a track is through the wardrobe because it's basically he's running through the woods at night and there are things pursuing him but it's almost like an adventure he's very excited and he has to go through like a big window and stuff like that and it, yeah very narnia style right very sort of like that sort of adventure on that and i can't pronounce this one at all it's sharp hatch of the keep uh, at this point in the in the show, um, there's like some sort of puppet on stage which looked horrendous, um, but it also looked like it was breathing. And you could almost, if you listen to it, it's almost like a heart beating and somebody horribly breathing. Which again, you've got dragons in your, you know, in, in your session. That's quite mm. a good one. The binding song is a great song. Mm. I I would use that as like an initiative. Like right, we're going to go into initiative. Yeah. It's quite short, but it's just like lots of clapping and sort of stamping mm. and stuff like that. As as Lottie was binding this creature to go make it go away, and again, visually stunning on that. The final one I sort of wanted to mention was the worm, which mm. again, not spoiling that, but um, it's 
horrible <laughs> but this idea that it's, uh, for me is like you summoning something and it goes wrong and it's like very sort of like doo -doo, sort of like a nice cheery sort of light tune but it's uh, almost underneath it's like horrible violins like something mm. is not right something is wrong and again the stagecraft of the scene at that point um i, I know it's also vague sort of like oh i should have seen the stage but it was just yeah i the whole audience was holding its breath it was that oh, wow. tense there was a lot of emotion in a lot of these tracks and yes. like you could feel like yeah, there was so much. I haven't seen it. I didn't read the books, but no. like you could again, it's a problem. It's, I'm not. I know. I, I know. I know. It's not a problem. It's just. It's my fault. I need to get in. I need to get more involved in Neil Gaiman as well. If you come to London, I'll go see with you again. Okay, and cool. Let's cry, do it. I'll cry let's on your it. shoulder. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I'll go see it. That's fine. It sounds amazing. Yeah. But like you could feel like with the titles of the tracks and the music that it was, it de like you could definitely exactly the Biny song. I was like. They're clearly trying to stop this worm because <laughs> that's what I figured yep. out. Uh, and not normal yet was like, what a great oh. title for it. Oh, it's horrible, yeah. isn't it? Oh, yeah. This, yeah, again, that sort of discordant, so sort of mm. things aren't exactly right. We They're don't know what it coming. is. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, and it like made sense of what I was reading. And then the two last tracks were really great as well. Like, the, yeah, yeah I, I thought it, definitely these ones you could so use in in games i thought yes. as well particularly like, as you've mentioned already and i felt that um but the thing the thing that you need someone to do is you need a you need a youtuber to make them an hour long <laughs> that's the problem yes because like or you need to have a good repeat system like have them on yeah the uh, remix <laughs> so, yeah. yeah but that's the thing is like yes. these because these are set for scenes it's a yes. the album total is uh 36 minutes exactly yes, just over half an hour it's like yeah and they're definitely repeating these tracks when they're live or not is that what they're doing um, i don't know so the is it scored the whole way through or not no so the the binding song for example comes back several times when they're doing that scene over and over that sort of thing right there's definitely i, I guess incidental bits mm. um but yeah definitely it's like the beginnings of scenes and it, it, then the mm. scene happens and then the end of scenes and that sort of thing um, so yeah okay. so i i would assume that they might have extended versions perhaps but uh mm. yeah these are sort of the main like themes mm. of the show if you see what i mean yeah no it's just it's just interesting to know like has a live orchestra that's that's but it's not they're not always playing and then mm -hmm. but then it's just people do do these things online there is a witcher there is like as a, yes. like every, like all these great songs people make hour-long versions of them or like yes. loop together a few tracks so maybe someone if this is yeah. gets big enough then I, might I would even say if you were thinking of running wild beyond the Witchlight, i Ooh, think this would be that a, is a great, great album that is a great shout yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, even beyond the carnival bit and you go to Hither, mm. Hither and Yon, I think mm. you could easily get some stuff there. Um, other soundtracks that might be similar, um, mm. I'm going to say uh, Coraline by Bruno yes. Collis, because that is a cracking soundtrack. And again, another Neil Gaiman fil mm. a film book. Um, great one. Uh, the other one uh, is Encryption, the newest video game that's sort of come out. I'm sure I've talked to you about it before. It's a, like a roguelike card game, and mm. it's very creepy. You're in a you're in a forest, but you're not. You're in a cabin. No, you're not. You're 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 selling pelts. I don't know. And it's just a, a lot of build up to it. But the music, the, the scoring of that okay. by uh, Jonah uh, Zenzel, because mm -hmm. I was creeped out by it, and then I got addicted to the game. And now I I hear the soundtrack when I'm going to bed, and I'm like, oh, this is a bad sign. <laughs> But yeah, any those two sort of came to mind if you're looking for something similar but weren't satisfied with the ocean at the end of the lane. But yeah, I yep. it's one of my favourite soundtracks, and yeah, like I said, I listened to it in a whole commute, and there's so many ideas come from it. So yeah, those are those are my three choices. No, they are good choices. They're great choice. Oh, I had another uh, one that just came to me, and then it's gone. Yes. <laughs> and literally, oh yeah, it's a, it's kind of esoteric. It's not. It's the piano. The piano. Do you know no. that movie? The film? 90s I've not, film. I've not, I've, it's, um, not, it's, got, it's not it, a fun film. I'll yeah, tell I was going to say, it's, it's Adrian Brody, isn't it? I've not seen it. No, yeah. that's The Pianist. That's oh, the there pianist. you go. <laughs> the pianist. So close, but so yeah. far. Then, uh, no, I've not seen The Piano. The <laughs> Piano is a uh, Holly Hunter. It's actually quite a disturbing film, and it's more disturbing the older you are and in the modern world that we're in. But it's a very interesting it's, it's the music of it uh, i remember it being very big in um when i was younger because my mum had it as a, as a cd it's got some beautiful piano music but it's a great one for just creating it's very new agey and it kind of gives you that sort of like it's very lyrical and it's quite a nice one for as a good soundtrack for something that's more if you're going for something sort of like you want something sort of flowing and your sort of classic music you're sort of i think that's a good one 
the other people like uh, also rans to get you some sort of like if you want a bit of f- funky funky choral Gregorian yeah. chants i yeah. would suggest uh, enigma always uh, for like a bit of world music I-, I like a bit of world music so that's yeah. why i've got a lot a lot yeah. of interest got that but they're, they're good sort of like it's a french composer doing dance meets gregorian chants amazing chants. yeah no definitely like it gets a little bit pseudo sexual because it is but they just it's but there's some good good tracks in there some are just not as good as others but there's there's some interesting like getting you then also just finding general gregorian chanting is like a good one if you're trying to get that sort of spiritual feel in mm. your game to go into a temple or something like that and kind of create mm. that real like choral atmospheres and stuff yeah so really get that across because yeah it's it's something i i would assume uh, and i assume of you as well something that we don't necessarily experience that sort of going into temples mm. and hearing that yes. music so often so yeah. i i do to set the scene as well mm. just as you would set the scene anyway if you were doing a horror game and like maybe turning yeah. lights down putting yes. out a candle yes. yeah, even though we're all yeah. told you know shouldn't have candles in your house anymore <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly what well, last but not least if you're yes. doing cyberpunk get wipeout audio they're free they're on youtube i use them yeah. all the time they're amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> done that's it all right well my, my final my final also ran yes. would be any studio ghibli soundtrack oh, there we go yes of course of yes. course um yeah pretty much um howl's moving castle uh again yeah. i know having that music I, I know again that mu- emotional connection to it but mm. that is such a great soundtrack Oh, the main one that I always forget the name of. Um, Spirited Away? Yeah, yeah, of course it's yeah. Spirited Away. I was like, the main away. one, Spirited yeah. Away, because that is, again, a beautiful and interesting story. And again, the music Such for that a great is... story. We've talked yeah. about that a few times on our shows, haven't we? I think it's, yeah. it's such a linchpin of like culture. And I think it's just so good. I think that's the first one I ever saw. And that, and that was for me was when it was like Stu Ghibli has made it big mm. uh, in the UK. Yeah. Because I just remember it being everywhere when it came yeah. out. And obviously they did, but done several films up until that point. Yeah. I was just like, whoa. Well, Hamilton, I think we've got a ton of films, TV shows, everything to watch because we just talked excitedly for like over an hour. And stuff. Um, is there anything, like a final takeaway you want to say? Ooh, is possible? there a final takeaway, if possible? I think music is a very important thing. <laughs> no yeah. shit. No, but I think um, I think it can add a lot to your games at home. I think it adds a lot of games generally. I think it's such an atmosphere builder. I think you can, what we've put out across is that you can build on general, everyone's knowledge of those songs as well to mm-hmm. build emotion. So you can either build emotion by the references that those songs make as much yeah. as you can build on the emotive quality of the music. So I think there's mm-hmm. always do that. Like I said, like when I put Jewel of the Fates on, that is an epic track, but yeah. it's also that connection everyone has with it. So, like, yeah. if you put on, you know, the Darth Vader theme, everyone knows it's a bad guy, and like, yeah. and it's going to have those connections. And so, yeah. you know, I think there's, I think, yeah, I think if you're trying to add to your role playing experience, it's a really easy, yeah. well, relatively easy way to just put an I extra agree. layer on things. I think, yeah, yeah, and to go over, I don't think there's any problem with that sort of. Oh, it's a cultural reference thing. So don't worry yeah. if you're like, oh, because I know, I know we joked about it earlier and like expanding things. Just just give other yeah. expanding a, a try, mm. and and you you never know where you're gonna, you, you sort of bounce around going, oh, but this reminds me of this and this reminds me of this, and it's just yeah. a way to get you like another again another also runs. I know I'm trying to fit the ball in for it. Yeah. Um, Imogen Heap. Uh, yes. She did. Um, she did obviously her first album, then became the soundtrack to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, yeah. and it's. It's bonkers because it, it is kind of the same album. I mean, if you listen to them, but like in really? the way they just stretched it out. And, uh, I love it. I think it's oh. really good. Oh, cool. um, there's this the Cursed Child soundtrack. Um, but yeah. I, I would say like listen to, if you if you haven't listened to any of Image and Heat stuff, listen to that soundtrack and then listen to the first album and then you're like, mm. oh, it's the same album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that they've just changed it a little bit. But yeah, and it's it's yeah. amazing where people get their um. No, uh, I think that's, I think that is the thing, and and. You know, if I hear the Shire theme from Lord of the Rings, I will just go back to being a thirteen-year-old again. So, like, it's yeah. like you know, put that on because if you've got people yeah. who've watched that movie and love it, then it's just going to do all the things you want it yeah. to do. Sort of. Thing. Yeah, I agree. Hamilton, thank you so yeah. much for letting us into your music taste and go, huh? And I go, oh, that makes <laughs> what? sense. What? <laughs> now it all makes sense. <laughs> and now it all makes sense. <laughs> Alton, um, what are you up to? Is there anything you'd like to plug? Oh. We've, got, we've got recommendations, so please no more recommendations. We've got all the, no. all the stuff. I'm putting, no. I'm putting in a box no together. What we do, what we do. I actually have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know when this is going out. 
May. 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 So by May, they'll look. We will be. Uh, there'll be stuff happening on the Dragon Channel. Mm-hmm. Yes, which we will be a part of <laughs> by now. Yes. Question yes. mark. Yes. Question yes. Mark. Mark. <laughs> yeah. And so worth just checking out those Twitters and checking out the Dragon's Jewel Twitter for what's going on at the time because I will I don't know at the moment <laughs> what's going on. We are still running through our Darkest Timeline Shattered Realm episode. So we reorganize a series, we've done a recut. We've done a re-edit, like uh, season four of, of um, Arrested Development. <laughs> we've done we've done the weird <laughs> timeline, and then we've recut it in order, and uh, and so which is fine. So if you want to go and check out all that, you can check it out on our YouTube channels, and you'll be seeing what's happening with our American players playing the same characters as our British players were playing, and then soon in May you will see them all together for some reason, which will be fun what oh my yes. god amazing that's gonna be so awesome yeah. what about you fiona and where what how how when who that's who? me hello <laughs> fiona my name is fiona what yes i know i don't know why i'm here either <laughs> where so glad you asked uh, <laughs> where you can tell yes, i did better. not practice this that much um so where is uh what am i rolling it's a twice monthly rpg one shot podcast as always it's going very well contrary to what i said previous episodes uh long haul 90 hp is still coming out at some point um we just i'm had... still waiting for it i know you are but but uh, very exciting stuff. We've had an interview with the designers of Merkborg, so that's gone out. I know. I'm doing uh, the face of Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> yes, they were uh, Johan and Pele. Sorry, uh, they were amazing. Uh, very humble chaps because uh, mm. obviously they're the latest sort of pre-order for one of their designs coming out. So I got a chance to meet with them. Mm. I also got a chance to uh, interview the new Death in Space rpg people uh, as well uh christian and carl uh, again super lovely people turns out all the swedish uh, rpg designers are very humble uh mm. and they're like i oh, we're glad people are playing our games we didn't expect it to be big and you're like have you seen the artwork guys yeah like, i mean like <laughs> come on and at some point i hopefully will be playing a solo one shot of death in space which i'm actually quite excited but not solo sorry like a one-on-one i was thinking one. have you seen there is a solo uh Mork borg supplement called is there? solitary defilement oh, oh amazing yeah. <laughs> and, but you can buy it as a bundle with like it's got lots of uh oracles it's got a few solo adventures and it's got the it's got the, the engine but it's also got a city engine as well which is called <sighs> all amongst the crowd or something like that or one in the crowd it's quite cool names that is it's great cool. it look i'm buying it as well because i want to play some more of it so that it's is, worth that is pretty cool well, you so could yeah, do so... dark fort which is their initial that is a, yeah, exactly. Anyway, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I've well, been this reading is the thing. a lot uh, about please, it. Please um, w- do go listen to those episodes because it was such, such a joy to get to interview them. And also the, those books and stuff are out now. Merkborg is out now. The pre-order stuff, yeah. has, as, as of recording, is out today. So yeah. if you want to go get those things, get the get the lovely GM screen because that looks absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I'm going down to my local bookshop tomorrow to buy the, yes. that for my holidays <laughs> reading. So yeah. Excellent. But uh, yeah, Death in Space, uh, basically, it's a similar sort of system, but you're in space and it's it's like Alien but miserable and the enemies are mm. yourselves and other people and the void um mm. and you gotta, gotta love a good void um but yes yeah, so those <laughs> gotta out. love a good void gotta love a good void um yeah and then and then i promise you <laughs> long haul mm. 1983 is coming out along with numenera uh, another solo rpg called users uh, typing message sent it's social anxiety and me so mm. enjoy me an hour of me going oh no my friends hate me because uh, that's what exactly what happens um and yeah loads more stuff coming your way but yeah i believe ah no no i'm an idiot I, every time we have an offer code. <laughs> I am trying to end on the episode. Yes, got to do the hand gestures. Everyone at home, follow along. So if you want 10% off your first order at your friendly local game store in Burnley, that's yeah. uh, Third Space Gaming, you got to type in the offer code DMBC into checkout and you get 10% off your first order. And that can be on anything. I feel if we've ever became, n- someone recognised us, if someone randomly recognised us from the internet and saw us, the thing that you should do to Fiona is not say anything. Just do the hand gesture. Hand gesture. And then just that's it and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but also make sure you make eye contact with me first. Yeah, and, don't, and don't like, approach me from behind. Because I'm yeah, like, no. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make eye contact. Sort of wave maybe first. Then do the... Yes. But they come up... And what you should do is go yes. up to each other and yeah. make it really freaky for everyone else around you. Just go up to each other and just go... Like you've not like no you've not even talked to each other. Do the hand gestures to each other and then walk away. The four hand gestures like <laughs> yeah, D M B C and then walk away, and then like salute and off you go. Man, and people I, just like I, I, I wish I was that see? cool. Like, what did I, I just it, see? It, it, 
you'd think it's like a, a Bond movie happening, and it's yeah, not. Exactly. It's just, it's just a... <laughs> until next time, fans. Thank you for joining us for the very first episode of season yeah. four, and yes. we'll be back uh, next week. Until then, we will see you on the see flip on the side. Flip side. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.